Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis admitted to a personal relationship with an outside prosecutor she appointed to manage the election interference case. Fonnie Willis has been caught having an affair with another prosecutor in the Trump case. Yes, this Fulton County District Attorney, Fannie Willis, has admitted to having a romantic relationship with special prosecutor Nathan Wade, sparking controversy and raising questions about potential conflicts of interest. In a 176-page court filing, Willis said she and Nathan Wade developed a relationship in 2022. This affair has sent shockwaves through the legal community, and some people are calling her out. Fulton County DA Bonnie Willis acted nothing like an experienced prosecutor yesterday, which is probably why she was kept off the stand today. But Fonnie Willis is not taking her attack sitting down. So let's be clear, because you've lied in this, this. Let me tell you which one you lied in right here. I think you lied right here. No, 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 no. This is the truth. Judge, and this, it, it, it is a lie. It is a lie. As Willis faces allegations of impropriety in her pursuit of the case against former President Donald Trump and 14 others, the future of the case hangs in the balance. Fonnie Willis admits to relationship. In January, Ashley Merchant filed a court motion alleging a financial conflict of interest due to Willis's relationship with special prosecutor Nathan Wade. This move brought the case to a grinding halt, leaving many wondering about the implications for the trial. Merchant defended her decision, stating that she felt it was a legal necessity to ensure a fair trial for her client, Michael Roman, one of Donald Trump's co-defendants. She emphasized that she didn't believe she had a choice but to file the motion. The consequences of not doing so could have been severe, potentially leading to her client's conviction and imprisonment. The motion filed by Merchant raised questions about the nature of Willis's relationship with Wade. It was alleged that Willis had hired Wade for the case, paying him $650,000. However, doubts were cast on Wade's qualifications and the timeline of their relationship. These allegations added fuel to the fire and intensified the scrutiny surrounding the case. The courtroom drama escalated as Willis took the stand, facing accusations of lying about the relationship. The exact start date and whether they had cohabitated became points of contention. Merchant's decision to bring the relationship to light was not without its internal conflicts. She admitted to having mixed feelings about it, but believed she had an obligation to do so. The potential impact on the case and her client's future weighed heavily on her. The revelation of the relationship and the subsequent attempts to disqualify Willis added another layer of complexity to an already sensational case. In a shocking turn of events, Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis has publicly acknowledged her romantic relationship with Special Prosecutor Nathan Wade. Willis, in a court, filing made it clear that the personal relationship between her and Wade has never involved any direct or indirect financial benefit to her. While she did not disclose whether the relationship is ongoing, Willis firmly stated that she has done nothing wrong and will not be stepping down from the case against former President Donald Trump and 14 others. This admission has sparked controversy and divided opinions. Some argue that Willis should consider recusing herself from the case to avoid any perception of bias. In contrast, others believe that her personal relationship with Wade does not necessarily impact her ability to prosecute the case fairly. Nathan Wade in his court documents also denied any conflict of interest. He stated that the personal relationship between him and Willis developed in 2022 after she had hired him for the high profile job of overseeing the racketeering investigation and prosecution of Trump and other individuals involved in the alleged election interference. Do you recall paying for a cabin six months ago, $1,400.81 in Tennessee? Where, 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 where are we now? What page is that? I'm just asking from your memory. It is worth noting that the affair between Willis and Wade has raised questions about the timing and potential impact on the case. Critics argue that their personal relationship could undermine the credibility of the prosecution, while others maintain that their professional qualifications and experience should be the determining factors in their involvement. The Trump election fraud case has been at the center of controversy since its inception, and the recent revelation of Fonnie Willis and Nathan Wade's relationship has only intensified the scrutiny. Willis, as Fulton County District Attorney has charged Donald Trump and a host of other attorneys, campaign officials, and election workers over their alleged efforts to overturn Joe Biden's 2020 victory in the state. These charges have sparked a firestorm of criticism and drawn the attention of Trump and Republicans in Georgia and in Congress. They have seized on the allegations of impropriety surrounding Willis and Wade's relationship to target the credibility of the prosecution. On January 8, 2023, a lawyer for former Trump campaign official Michael Roman filed a motion to 
disqualify Willis, Wade, and the entire district attorney's office from the case, citing the alleged relationship as a conflict of interest. Roman also accused Wade of using some of the substantial funds he received for the case to finance trips with Willis to California, Florida, and Caribbean cruises. The allegations of impropriety have not only targeted Willis, but have also raised questions about the integrity of the entire election fraud case. House Judiciary Committee Chair Reparano Jim Jordan has subpoenaed Willis, demanding documents related to how her office spends federal funds, further fueling the controversy surrounding the case. In response to these allegations, Willis filed a 167-page document criticizing the motions as salacious and lacking any basis for disqualification. She argued that the evidence and facts demonstrate that she has no financial conflict of interest that would warrant her removal from the case. The revelation of Fonnie Willis and Nathan Wade's relationship has sparked a heated debate about the potential impact on the Trump election fraud case. Both sides have presented arguments regarding the implications of their personal involvement in the prosecution. Willis, in her court filing, acknowledged the personal friendship and professional relationship that developed into a romantic affair with Wade. However, she emphasized that their relationship began after she had already hired him as the special prosecutor for the high-profile case. Willis argues that their personal relationship does not impact the prosecution and that the existence of a relationship between members of a prosecution team in and of itself does not entitle a criminal defendant to any remedy. On the other hand, Michael Roman, a co-defendant in the case, insists that the February 15th hearing must proceed. He claims that people's freedom and lives are at stake and that he can prove that Willis and Wade had cohabitated. Roman and his defense lawyer, Ashley Merchant, have subpoenaed Willis and Wade as potential witnesses to testify publicly at the hearing, aiming to determine if they have benefited financially from their personal and professional relationship. Critics argue that if the allegations are true, Willis should consider stepping aside from the case to avoid any perception of bias and to protect the integrity of the entire prosecution. Clark Cunningham, a professor of law and ethics, believes that Willis should take a leave of absence and appoint a career prosecutor to ensure a fair trial. However, legal experts have weighed in, stating that Willis and Wade's relationship does not appear to violate any Georgia election law or legal ethics. They argue that their extensive qualifications and experience should be the determining factors in their involvement in the case. As the court evaluates the arguments presented by both sides, the future of the Trump election fraud case hangs in the balance. The decision regarding Willis and Wade's involvement and the potential impact on the prosecution will have significant implications for the trial's fairness and credibility. Norm Eisen, former Obama White House ethics czar, has stated that based on the information available, nothing Willis and Wade have done appears to be a violation of the law or legal ethics. He believes that their personal relationship, while potentially raising eyebrows, does not automatically disqualify them from prosecuting the case. Ryan Goodman, a law professor at New York University School of Law, has criticized Willis and Wade for the negative attention their relationship has garnered. However, he acknowledges that their extensive court filing made solid legal arguments as to why both should stay involved in the case. The disqualification issue surrounding Fonnie Willis and Nathan Wade's relationship has the potential to cause significant delays in the Trump election fraud case, with far-reaching consequences for both the prosecution and the public. Legal experts, including Clark Cunningham, a professor of law and ethics, have expressed concerns about the impact of this issue on the entire prosecution. Cunningham believes that the disqualification issue may not be resolved quickly, even if Willis prevails in the upcoming hearing. This could lead to prolonged delays in the case, which would be detrimental to both the trial and the public's perception of the justice system. A delay of this magnitude would not only prolong the legal proceedings but also create uncertainty and frustration among the defendants, the public, and the legal community. It could also provide an opportunity for the defense to challenge the credibility of the prosecution and potentially weaken the case against Donald Trump and the other individuals involved. Furthermore, the longer the case is delayed, the more it risks fading from public attention and losing its impact. The urgency and significance of the alleged election fraud may diminish over time, potentially affecting the public's perception of the case and its outcome. As the scandal surrounds surrounding Fannie Willis and Nathan Wade's relationship continues to unfold. Uncertainty looms over the Trump election fraud case. The upcoming hearing will be a pivotal moment in determining the course of the trial. The court will carefully evaluate the arguments presented by both sides regarding the impact of Willis and Wade's relationship on the case. The outcome of this hearing will have far-reaching implications for the trial's credibility and the public's perception of the justice system. The defense, led by Michael Roman and his defense lawyer Ashley Merchant, is determined to proceed with the hearing, emphasizing the importance of addressing the allegations and ensuring a fair trial. They argue that people's freedom and lives are at stake and that the truth must be uncovered. On the other hand, Willis and Wade may
maintain their innocence and their commitment to pursuing justice. They believe their personal relationship does not compromise their ability to carry out their professional duties objectively. However, despite the accusations of an inappropriate romantic involvement that Willis allegedly tried to conceal with special counsel Nathan Wade, Fulton County Superior Court Judge Scott McAfee ruled that she could still continue with the case as long as she dismissed Wade. This decision met resistance from Georgia Republicans, but it is what it is. The Georgia case. Breaking news, Donald Trump is asking a judge to throw out the election subversion case against him in Georgia. Now let's delve into the highly controversial and sensational Trump Georgia case that has caused all this drama. This pending criminal case involves Donald J. Trump, the 45th president of the United States, and 18 co-defendants who are facing charges related to allegations of election fraud in Georgia. The indictment, handed up by a grand jury in August 2023, includes charges such as violating Georgia's racketeer-influenced and corrupt organizations, RICO, statute, solicitation of violation of oath by a public officer, and conspiracy to commit election fraud. To fully understand the Trump Georgia case, it is crucial to explore the timeline of events that led to this unprecedented legal battle. Let's take a closer look at the key moments that have shaped this case. The investigation into the alleged election interference in Georgia was launched in February 2021 by Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis. This marked the beginning of a thorough examination of the claims surrounding the 2020 U.S. presidential election. After months of investigation, a grand jury handed up the indictment in August 2023. The indictment accuses Donald J. Trump, the 45th president of the United States, and 18 co-defendants of engaging in a criminal racketeering enterprise to unlawfully change the outcome of the 2020 U.S. presidential election in Georgia. The indictment includes a range of charges, such as violating Georgia's racketeer-influenced and corrupt organizations, RICO statute, solicitation of violation of oath by public officer, and conspiracy conspiracy to commit election fraud. These charges highlight the gravity of the allegations against Trump and his co-defendants. One of the shocking allegations in the case is the claim that Trump and his allies plotted to create fake electors. These fake electors were allegedly intended to manipulate the electoral process and overturn the 2020 election results in Georgia. Another significant aspect of the case revolves around the alleged pressuring of Georgia state officials. It is claimed that Trump and his co-defendants used various tactics to pressure these officials in an attempt to change the outcome of the election. The indictment also mentions the illegal access of voting systems. The defendants are accused of engaging in activities that violated the integrity of the electoral process, further fueling the controversy surrounding the case. Four defendants have already pleaded guilty, acknowledging their involvement in the alleged criminal activities. These guilty pleas have shed light on the extent of the wrongdoing and have added weight to the prosecution's case. While some defendants have pleaded guilty, the trial for the remaining defendants who have pleaded not guilty is yet to be scheduled. The anticipation surrounding this trial is immense as it will determine the fate of those involved and potentially set a precedent for future cases of election fraud. The Trump Georgia case has far-reaching implications for the 2020 U.S. presidential election. It has raised questions about the integrity of the electoral process and the potential impact of election fraud on the democratic system. The outcome of this case will undoubtedly shape the future of elections in the United States. As we can see, the Trump Georgia case is a complex legal battle shaped by a series of key events. From the long of the investigation to the indictment and the subsequent guilty pleas, each step has added to the intrigue and significance of this case. Now that we have explored the timeline of events leading up to the Trump Georgia case, let's dive deeper into the specific allegations and shocking details surrounding the charges. Brace yourself for a closer look at the heart of this sensational legal battle. You're not permitted to destroy documents. You're not permitted to take documents. They don't belong to him. The indictment accuses Donald J. Trump and his co-defendants of violating violating Georgia's racketeer-influenced and corrupt organizations, RICO, statute. This charge suggests that they engaged in a criminal enterprise with the intent to unlawfully change the outcome of the 2020 U.S. presidential election in Georgia. Another significant charge in the case is the solicitation of violation of oath by public officer. It is alleged that Trump and his allies sought to persuade public officials to breach their oaths and act in a manner that would benefit their efforts to overturn the election results. The indictment also includes the charge of conspiracy to commit election fraud. This allegation suggests that Trump and his co-defendants conspired to manipulate the electoral process in Georgia, potentially undermining the integrity of the democratic system. One of the most astonishing allegations in the case is the claim that Trump and his allies plotted to create fake electors. These fake electors, if successful, could have had a profound impact on the outcome of the 2020 election in Georgia, raising serious questions about the legitimacy of the electoral process. The case highlights the alleged efforts by 
Trump and his co-defendants to pressure Georgia state officials. It is claimed that they used various tactics, including personal appeals and exertion of influence, to coerce these officials into taking actions that would favor their attempts to overturn the election results. The indictment also mentions the harassment of Fulton County election workers. These workers, who played a crucial role in ensuring the integrity of the election process, allegedly faced undue pressure and intimidation from Trump's allies as they carried out their duties. Another shocking detail in the case is the accusation that Trump and his co-defendants illegally accessed voting systems. This alleged act, if proven, would raise serious concerns about the security and sanctity of the electoral process in Georgia. As mentioned earlier, some defendants have already pleaded guilty in the case. These guilty pleas have resulted in sentences that include probation, fines, and public apologies. These outcomes shed light on the extent of the involvement of certain individuals in the alleged criminal activities. The indictment also mentions 30 unindicted co-conspirators who allegedly participated in the same criminal activities. While their identities remain undisclosed, their alleged involvement adds another layer of intrigue to the case. The Trump-Georgia case is a legal battle that has captured the attention of the nation. The specific allegations and details surrounding the charges paint a picture of a complex and far-reaching scheme to overturn the 2020 U.S. presidential election results in Georgia. As the trial for the remaining defendants is yet to be scheduled, the world waits in anticipation to see how justice will be served and what impact the outcome will have on the future of elections in the United States. Following the indictment, one of the co-defendants, Mark Meadows, former chief of staff to Donald Trump, filed a motion to dismiss the charges against him. However, the court denied the motion, signaling that the case would proceed as planned. Undeterred, Meadows appealed the denial of his motion to dismiss the charges. He sought a full court hearing to present his arguments. However, the appeal was ultimately denied, ensuring that the case would continue in the scheduled manner. According to the available information, some defendants have pleaded guilty in the case, while others have chosen to cooperate with prosecutors. Sidney Powell, a prominent figure in Trump's legal team, is among those who have pleaded guilty and agreed to cooperate. This development has added a new layer of complexity to the proceedings. Another significant development came with the guilty plea of Kenneth Chesebro, a Trump ally. Chesebro's plea further solidified the prosecution's case and provided valuable insights into the alleged criminal activities. The trial dates for the remaining defendants was set for October 23, 2023, according to the available information. However, there have been discussions and potential delays regarding the scheduling of the trial. The court is carefully considering the complexities of the case and the potential impact on the judicial process. Various defendants have requested a speedy trial and the severance of their cases from the main trial. These requests have sparked debates and discussions among legal experts as the court weighs the merits and implications of such actions. However, the Trump-Georgia case took an unexpected turn when special prosecutor Nathan Wade resigned due to a conflict of interest. This resignation raised questions about the impartiality of the proceedings and led to a hearing to determine the course of action. During the course of the legal proceedings, certain charges mentioned in the indictment were dismissed after careful review by the court. The court considered the evidence and arguments presented, resulting in the dismissal of these specific charges. Also, given the high-profile nature of the case and the potential for public scrutiny, efforts have been made to protect jurors and prevent leaks of sensitive evidence. The court has taken measures to ensure a fair and impartial trial, free from external influences. The Trump-Georgia case has garnered national attention and has been the subject of intense political scrutiny. The outcome of this case has far-reaching implications, not only for the defendants, but also for the broader political landscape and future elections. The Trump-Georgia case has garnered significant attention from the public, with reactions ranging from anticipation to skepticism. Supporters of Donald Trump closely follow the case, hoping for evidence that supports their claims of election fraud. On the other hand, critics of Trump closely scrutinize the proceedings, seeking validation for their concerns about the integrity of the electoral process. The outcome of the case is likely to fuel further debates and discussions about the state of democracy in the United States. Given the high-profile nature of the case, it is expected to have significant political repercussions. The trial and its outcome could shape public opinion, influence future elections, and potentially impact the political careers of those involved. The reactions from political figures, both in support and opposition of Trump, will undoubtedly be closely watched as they navigate the complexities of this legal battle. Now let's delve into who Fonnie Willis is. Fonnie Willis. So let's be clear, because you've lied in this, this. Let me tell you which one you lied in. Right here. I think you lied right here. No, 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 no. no. This is the truth. Judge. And this, it, it is a lie. It is a lie. 
Have you ever wondered who this remarkable woman is and what makes her such a prominent figure in the legal and political landscape? Well, you're in the right place. Fannie Willis, born in 1971 in Inglewood, California, is the first woman to hold the esteemed position of district attorney in Fulton County. Her journey to this role has been nothing short of extraordinary. From her early career as a solicitor to her groundbreaking prosecution of the Atlanta Public Schools cheating scandal, Fannie Willis's journey to becoming the district attorney of Fulton County, Georgia, began with her early life and education. Born in 1971 in Inglewood, California, Fannie Typha Willis grew up in a politically active family. Her father, John C. Floyd III, was a founder of a faction of the Black Panthers, but became disillusioned with the movement's infighting. When Fannie was just in the first grade, her family relocated to Washington, D.C., where her father practiced law as a criminal defense attorney. It was during this time that Fannie's passion for justice and the law began to take shape. While her parents eventually divorced, Fannie mostly stayed with her father, who played a significant role in shaping her values and aspirations. As she grew older, Fannie's interest in law and politics continued to flourish. She attended Regina High School, an all-girls Catholic high school in Maryland, where she received a well-rounded education that instilled in her a strong sense of discipline and determination. After graduating from high school, Fannie set her sights on higher education. She enrolled at Howard University, a prestigious institution known for its commitment to social justice and civil rights. Fannie pursued a degree in political science, immersing herself in the study of government and the legal system. Her dedication and hard work paid off as she graduated cum laude in 1993, earning the respect and admiration of her professors and peers. Eager to further her legal education, Fannie made the decision to move to Atlanta, Georgia to attend Emory University School of Law. Emory's renowned law program provided her with the opportunity to refine her legal skills and deepen her understanding of the justice system. In 1996, Fannie achieved a significant milestone in her academic journey, graduating from Emory with a Juris Doctor degree. Armed with her law degree and a passion for seeking justice, Fannie embarked on her professional career. Her first government job was as a solicitor, where she gained valuable experience prosecuting misdemeanors and city ordinance violations. This early experience in the courtroom allowed Fannie to develop her litigation skills and gain a deeper understanding of the criminal justice system. Fannie's dedication and commitment to justice did not go unnoticed. In 2000, she joined the Fulton County District Attorney's Office, where she would spend the next 16 years as a prosecutor. During her time in the district attorney's office, Fannie handled a wide range of cases, honing her skills as a prosecutor and earning a reputation for her tenacity and commitment to justice. One of Fannie's most notable cases came in the form of the Atlanta Public Schools cheating scandal. As an assistant district attorney at the time, Fannie was appointed as the lead prosecutor in the high-profile trial of 12 educators accused of racketeering. These educators were alleged to have corrected answers entered by students to inflate the scores of state-administered standardized tests. Fanny's meticulous preparation and compelling arguments led to the conviction of 11 out of the 12 defendants under Georgia's RICO statute in April 2015. This landmark case showcased Fanny's ability to navigate complex legal matters and seek justice for the community she served. In 2018, Fanny decided to venture into private practice, expanding her legal expertise beyond the confines of the district attorney's office. However, her passion for public service and her commitment to upholding the law led her back to the public sector. In 2019, Fannie became the chief municipal judge for South Fulton, Georgia, where she continued to make a positive impact on the community. Little did Fannie know that her career was about to take a monumental turn. In 2020, she made the decision to run for the position of district attorney for Fulton County, challenging the six-term incumbent, Paul Howard Jr., who was also her former boss. Fannie's campaign focused on her commitment to justice, her experience as a prosecutor, and her dedication to serving the people of Fulton County. The election proved to be a turning point in Fannie's career, as she emerged victorious, becoming the district attorney of Fulton County and making history as the first woman to hold this esteemed position. Since assuming office as the district attorney of Fulton County, Fannie Willis has made significant strides in upholding the law and seeking justice for the community she serves. Her tenure has been marked by a commitment to fairness, integrity, and a determination to make a positive impact on the criminal justice system. One of the defining aspects of Fannie's role as district attorney has been her effective use of Georgia's RICO, Racketeer in influenced and corrupt organization statute. Traditionally associated with prosecuting organized crime, Fani has successfully utilized this powerful tool to target non-mobsters involved in criminal activities. Her innovative approach has allowed her to tackle complex cases and bring justice to those who have violated the law, regardless of their affiliations. However, it is Fani's investigation into the 2020 presidential election in Georgia that has garnered national attention. In February 2021, she launched a criminal investigation into Donald Trump's attempts to influence
against Georgia election officials. This investigation focused on allegations that Trump had pressured officials to find enough votes to overturn Joe Biden's victory in the state. Fani's commitment to upholding the integrity of the democratic process and ensuring that every vote counts has been unwavering. In January 2022, Fani requested a special grand jury to consider charges of election interference by Trump and his allies. This grand jury was given investigative authority and subpoena power, allowing them to delve deep into the allegations and gather evidence. The grand jury, consisting of 26 members, heard from numerous witnesses, including former U.S. Senator Kelly Loeffler and former White House counsel Pat Cipollone. Their thorough investigation culminated in a report that was released in parts on February 16, 2023, following a judge's order. The findings of the grand jury were staggering. Fani's office indicted Donald Trump and 18 alleged co-conspirators on 41 charges, including 13 charges against Trump himself. These charges ranged from racketeering to other crimes related to the alleged election interference. The indictment sent shockwaves throughout the nation as it marked the first time a former president faced such serious legal consequences for his actions. However, the legal battle was far from over. In 2024, Judge Scott McAfee quashed six charges, including three against Trump, while giving prosecutors the option to refile these charges. This development added another layer of complexity to the case, leaving the outcome uncertain. Nevertheless, Fani remained resolute in her pursuit of justice, determined to hold those responsible accountable for their actions. While Fani's investigation into the 2020 election has garnered significant attention, it is important to note that her role as district attorney extends beyond this high-profile case. Her office continues to handle a wide range of criminal cases, ensuring justice is served for the people of Fulton County. Fani's commitment to fairness and her dedication to upholding the law have earned her the respect and admiration of her colleagues and the community she serves. However, Fani's tenure has not been without its challenges. In 2022, an employee in the Fulton County District Attorney's Office alleged that Willis fired her for uncovering plans to misuse federal grant funding. This allegation raised concerns about potential misconduct within the office. Subsequently, the House Judiciary Committee subpoenaed Willis to testify regarding the whistleblower complaint. These challenges have tested Fani's resolve, but she has remained steadfast in her commitment to transparency and accountability. Fani Willis's role as the District Attorney of Fulton County has been marked by her unwavering dedication to justice and her innovative approach to prosecuting criminal activities. Her investigation into the 2020 presidential election has brought national attention to her work, highlighting her commitment to upholding the integrity of the democratic process. As she continues to navigate the legal challenges ahead, Fani remains a formidable force in the pursuit of justice. Thanks for watching. Click on the videos on your screen for similar content.